G'day guys, welcome back to the Inner City Hermit podcast. Like I always say, if you do enjoy the content, make sure you go over to YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called. Go subscribe there so you keep up to date and then go and follow the Inner City Hermit social media pages at Inner City Hermit on Facebook and Instagram. Yeehaw, that was really quick. Okay, um, so I've been sort of dabbling with this idea for a while. It, um, it sort of took a while for me to do it, which is kind of ironic considering it's probably the easiest podcast or slash video to make. But um, as a lot of you know, the podcast turned one. Yes, we turned one, uh, one year of the hermit. So I thought I'd throw together like a little montage video of all of my sort of favorite bits, whether they're funny or motivating or whatever, just parts of the podcast that I have found um, have been really enjoyable and really fun. And to be honest, it was actually really hard because I've enjoyed majority of everything I've been doing. So without further ado, without me chewing your ear off anymore, this is One Year of the Hermit. Enjoy, you guys. Peace. work and I prep like meal prep some stuff it's like I know what I'm gonna eat right but when when you're staying home you don't usually meal prep like I don't I don't know anyone really that like oh I'm gonna be home for the day oh I've prepped these two meals it's like eh you know and like it's it's really the temptation especially living in the city there's so many good food places but the temptation to eat out is so massive so i want a massive kick at the moment to save money so it's fucking hard i'm really struggling with it but uh actually that's a lie i'm not really struggling with it but i do find it hard especially because of this piece of shit yes my phone my phone is my worst fucking enemy tell you what because they're like uber eats so it's not even just Uber Eats, right? So I've got the Domino's app and I've got the Pizza Hut app. I think it's a Pizza Hut. Yeah. And I've got obviously Uber Eats. And their marketing is second to none. Like it is, I, I swear to God, this thing has a chip in my brain because the moment, and I mean, like obviously I'm, I'm a, I'm a bloke that uh, I've, you know, I don't, I don't really receive all that many text messages. I'm not messaging a million people. I don't really like to text all that much. And I, when I get a message, it's like, fuck yeah, I got a text message. Like who, who the fuck could it be? Cause the only people that text me are my family or Kia, my girlfriend and sometimes my mates. But if it's my mates, it'll be like, what are you doing? Or some shit like that. And I get a text and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Random text. This is sick. Okay. Check it. It's fucking dominoes. It's fucking dominoes every time. Like, and it's the moment that I'm like, I, I've, like, I'll have food in the fridge and I'll be like, you know, you don't need to eat out, man. Like, don't eat out. And then I'll get a message from Domino's. And the fucks even know that I order vegan pizzas all the time because they'll give me like a vegan pizza deal. And it's like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, um, add vegan meat to your fucking vegan margarita, which is what I always get for $3 extra, making it 10 bucks. That's dangerous. That's like, it's kind of like a, like a dirty, a dirty ex that you don't want to talk to ever again. You know, like you're, you're out, you're off the, off the lashes. You feel, you're, you're off the cuffs. You feel great. You feel like a new human. And then just, you just get that dirty, filthy text message of like, oh, what are you doing? And you're like, oh no, not this again. That's dominoes. Cause you feel good. You're like, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. Domino's slides into your DMs. Come, come eat some greasy pizza, big boy. No, fuck you. No, not, not, not again. I've been down this road before. Come on, just one little slice of pizza. It's only ten dollars. Fuck off. Don't, don't do that. And then you know, after enough text messages, you you get to the point where you're like, I mean, it's only one. It's only one pizza. I could eat out once this week. And then you buy a fucking pizza. Those dirty, dirty, dirty pizza yeah, boys. Yeah, anyway, sometimes I get that weird... I get some... Almost like a... Yeah, like a... Yeah, like a... No, we a, had a... Um, gluey aftertaste from beer. We had... Look, I can't say I've eaten glue, nor do I know the brands of glue that you've eaten. You drink it, but yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I so wondered. It's, it's like a... It's like a moussey type <laughs> yeah. texture. Hey, it's pretty yeah, heavy. Yeah, do you reckon you drink mousse or you eat mousse? Dude, do, I had this conversation mm. with a, a someone the other day. I was like... About mousse. I was like, no, no, about yogurt. Like, oh, yeah. Do you drink yogurt or do you eat it? 
It's hard because it's like... Because every action <laughs> besides the spoon action, every action would involve drink. Like how many times do you... But it's the same with soup. Yeah. You have the, the spoon action with soup. You, you say, you, do you drink soup? You drink soup. Yeah, you it's drink liquid. soup. It's yeah, predominantly liquid. Soup. But then it's like... The same way that soup can have all this stuff in it that you have to chew on. Yeah, same like way, chowder. Like, well, yo- then there's chowder, the heaviest of all soups. Exactly. Or pumpkin soup. Bro. And like yogurt can have little things like berries in it, which you have to then chew. Yeah. You know what so I mean? Some so some yogurts, mm, you some can yogurt. chew. Like I, if, if there's someone that chews vanilla yogurt, you're fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that kid definitely did. Yeah, bro. He, sat, I- there, he sat there like... <laughs> there's nothing. Like, it's liquid. What are you doing? He was like, yeah, it's just like gum. <laughs> You just keep it in your- <laughs> Patrick, what are you chewing? Uh, are the you glue. chewing gum? No, I'm chewing glue. <laughs> Could you imagine? Dude, I remember oh. in school, bro, because I used to, um, you know, like every time I'd be like, oh, I don't want to go to class. I was like, fuck it. And I'd just do laps around the school. Or I'd go like hang out with the teacher I like. Mm, and I'd go back sick. to my class. <clears throat> and you know the one excuse that no teacher ever, as a bloke, no teacher will ever question you? Hang on. Have a thing. You had a hard on and you had to leave class. Oh, no. No. How do you have a hard on for 70 minutes? Mm, I suppose yeah, as a 14 yeah. year old boy. <laughs> yeah. Anything's possible. Yeah, dude. I used yeah. to look at trees and be like, oh, we got curves <laughs> on that tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, like, okay, what's the one excuse that no one's going to ask any questions? Like as a bloke, because you can't like chicks need to say, "Oh, I got my period," and then teachers like, "Whoa, whoa, okay, cool." That's I don't fine. know. You got like a, I don't know, like a gooch issue or no, something. Dude, I don't you know. look him dead in the eye and you go, <laughs> "I had diarrhea." <laughs> 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 what teacher is gonna ask you? Did you really have diarrhea? <laughs> Where's the evidence? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in the last week of the holidays, my uh, my fridge broke. Yes, my fridge broke. It is my the first time that my personal, since I've moved out of home, it's the first time that my personal fridge has uh, broken. And I tell you what, I completely understand when my fridge at home, when the power went out or something and my mum lost her brain uh, because the bloody fridge was off and the freezer was defrosting and the fridge was going, and everything was going off in the fridge and she was losing her mind like, quick, we have to eat everything, eat the ice cream, eat the ice, just eat frozen water, just eat it, eat everything in the fridge because this thing's about to explode. Um, I totally get that now. I totally understand. Uh, it was a bit of annoying um, broken fridge situation because the fridge itself, I don't think was actually broken. I think there was just, maybe the motor was kind of dying and like the lights and everything worked and it would it'd get really cool and then it warm. And anyway, the bloody thing was a bit bipolar. It would like, the, the freezer used to work and then but the freezer would sometimes go to the temperature that the fridge should be at and then the fridge would be like the temperature the freezer would be at and then the fridge would actually turn off and then the freezer would go too high. So... It was just a nightmare and my anxiety went through the bloody roof. I was losing my mind. I, could, I was just like, what What do I do? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to adult anymore. So I bought a new fridge. Yes, I bought a new fridge. And yes, uh, my old fridge did start working the day I bought the new fridge and it was fantastic. Yes, but um, I do have a new fridge. I love the fridge. Last podcast, you could probably just hear the bloody fridge in the background um, making sounds and all that shit. And it, it pissed me off cause I can hear it in my headphones and I couldn't concentrate and I was sweaty cause I was anxious and my whole brain was doing circles. But, um, yeah, so I got a new fridge and the fridge, uh, you know, when you realize you're kind of old, the, you realize you're kind of old when things like a fridge really jack you up. Like I was genuinely stoked that my fridge has more room uh, to put refrigerated items in it. And, you know, when, you, when you're thinking it, you're like stoked. You're like, oh, man, you do, like, you know, you know when you're a kid and you got like a new Game Boy or something, you're like all the, you get all your mates, you're like, guys, look at this. Look at this. It's a bloody new Game Boy. Check that out. When you're old, nobody really shares the same excitement over your new fridge that you do. You know, like, I guess I was stoked and Kia was stoked. We got a new fridge. It's amazing. Oh, look at all the freezer space. Like, look, babe, look how much, look how much food we can sit in here. Oh, you don't want to finish that? No dramas. Let's just chuck it in the fridge because we've got that much space. Look, I can keep, I can keep 
three six packs of beer in the fridge and we still got room for everything like that was my mentality and you know it, it really made me realize that I'm getting older and I'm getting I'm realizing that homewares are like my new PlayStation that's correct and I love um that because you just see and I noticed this is because you you po- repost a lot of people's sort of definitely stories and people hype up like people yeah. froth it man like they really get behind you which is awesome yeah so i think that's something that you can't really tell people to do though because yeah. it kind of just happened randomly like when i first started it like that never really seemed to happen but as like instagram's evolved obviously since i started it to now um i see bigger brands a lot of people because they're so excited for it they will repost and that just brings more and more attention to it anyway but i have only noticed that happening probably for the last like two or three drops yeah the first ones were kind of like not really like no one's really reposting stuff yeah, but yeah. now you see on everyone's stories everyone's reposting everything i, I think so it's, it's that like, like um two people love that uh we had I, I was chatting to the the brilliant beer boys mm-hmm. and they sort of had the same thing they people feel included when you yeah when you repost exactly. that they feel kind of exactly. a part of the community and that's what it's all about man like it's yeah. one big family like it's not um it's not just like i'm just see it and then i don't reply like i reply to every message yeah everyone who shows love are always like repost that and make sure they're appreciated and it goes I mean? a long way so. too like that that time because I, I could imagine you know that time it's you, yeah there is parts it's, of you where you're just like shit like yeah because sometimes it'll be like 2 a.m in the morning man and yeah. you're just like someone will send you a message so you can either choose to like ignore that for 12 hours yeah. or it's like nah actually you know what like they're genuinely interested in what i'm doing like why would i go to bed and like just ignore that you know what i mean yeah like exactly. everyone gets in those moods but like i think with me i've been doing it for what nearly it's probably just been over a year and a half now I think that's just instilled in me now. It's kind of right. like I just need to keep pushing and pushing and that's, pushing. That's crazy growth yeah, too. I so mean, it like... It's crazy. It's it, a long... Like, if you're going to do it, it's long hours. It's ooh, long fuck hours. fuck yeah. yeah. And because you, you'd have to... You have to sustain, like, an income. So you still need to... Exactly. So you still need to work. That's the like, grind people yeah, don't it's, see. It's a hustle, man. Like, no one yeah. knows that about me personally. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. obviously, the close ones know. But as a follower... They don't really know me as such. They just see the brand. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, this guy's just putting out this, but really I've just worked 10 hours. Yeah. And or, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then fuck. I'm doing that and yeah. then I've got to pack orders and it's all that. But it's it's becoming, um, it's obviously on a roll now, I feel. So um, it's that I keeping that keep ball moving, man. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's, you know, I bet you too, he's probably the type of person that would literally like stand up, probably stand up when, you know, you know how you land and they go, you know, oh, you know, keep your you keep your seatbelt fastened. Keep your seatbelt fastened until the plane has come to a complete stop. Like I don't know how much more specific. Like there's not many other abbreviations for complete stop. When it says complete stop, it usually means when something is not moving. Yet there's still always like a older person who decides to just stand up as soon as the plane hits the ground. Like the things like in a reverse thrust, throwing you forward and some dickhead will still stand up and try and oh, fiddle around with his fucking bag that hasn't gone anywhere because there's been no turbulence. Like where is your bag going to go? What are you worried someone's going to steal your bag? No one wants to steal your bag, Derek. Okay? You've probably got like eight books in there and some headphones that don't even work anymore maybe a discman no one is stealing your bag derek sit down far out i think flying flying is just one of those things where because i'm so highly strung as it is because i'm scared shitless i just i think i'm so critical of people on the plane like and I'm, i'm i'm not an asshole like i'm not gonna get up and be like oh like i hate you and why are you doing this but I just notice so much more and it's, it's it's usually older men. Older men are like, you know, like they're just always doing things like they don't think. It's like there's a part of their brain that's not that's not working, that doesn't work properly because they just lose it over time. Like, I don't know, maybe they just don't care anymore and that's that's the problem. But man, it kills me. God damn, just sit down. Just sit down. Or even like the people, the people who have to, like literally I, on the way home, we were in, in like the middle row. So like, you know, there's a door at the back of the plane, door at the front of the plane and that you're in the middle. So you're not going anywhere. Like unless there's a crash and you can get out the middle door, you can either go the front or the back and it's a line. And even still when you get out, like what are you, what are you going to rush for? 
Like, are you, why do you have to be first out of the plane? Like, everyone's getting off. Is it, Are you worried that if you don't get off first, the plane's going to fucking turn around, take off, and go back to where it came from? Oh, man. Like, just wait. Just just be patient and sit there. Sit there. Sit there. Like, no, you don't... Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, for example, like, um, I was talking to one of one of Kia's friends, like, yesterday or the day before. I can't remember when. I think it might have been this morning. I don't know. But she said that there was this dude that, like, went to our gym. And she was like, oh, yeah, like, this dude, like, would, like, send me dick pics every day. And I was like, well, did you reply? She's like, no. Imagine being a guy, right? And, and <laughs> yeah, some imagine point. being a guy and like, and I'm not talking like a random dick pic. Like sometimes like a girl might be like, oh Unsolicited yeah, send, dick send, dicks. Us your, send us your dicks or whatever. But I, I don't know how they, they ask. Like, yeah, send us a, send us a hog pic or something, <laughs> whatever. If like chicks want to see it, go for it. But could you imagine being so fucking dumb that yeah. you're like, oh, I don't know what to say to this girl. Like, should I say, hey, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to leave with my dick. You know what you should do? You know what you should do? Just take a photo of your erect dick, <laughs> send it to her every single day. Genitals I, are an icebreaker. <laughs> so I, the, the worst thing is, right, I know that there's a guy giving advice to that guy who's sending the dick pics. Oh, you're no, like, this isn't dude, a single effort. I mean, you're this, a, yeah. imagine you're in a group chat with your mates and you're like, boys, like, I've just been chatting to this girl for a <laughs> good two hours now. It's not really going anywhere. What do you like? What do you reckon? Send her a dick. What do you think of this? Takes a picture of his dick, sends it to his mates. Like, what do you imagine? Imagine that. That's the thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, no and, one... then, and, and your mates are like, "Ah, oh, dude, that's a really good picture. Bro, like, your yeah. dick is looking pretty. It's <laughs> the dick. girth of your dick right now. Honestly, she's gonna love it." He's you like, "Yeah, but what about my balls? You reckon they're a little bit? My balls now the balls shape. are the best part. Keep the balls. <laughs> don't don't crop the balls out. Keep them in." All right, thanks, boys. That's really helpful. That's very good advice. I'm gonna send this. Imagine that. Imagine coming that's back. That's basically what you're doing when you send a dick pic to a girl. Like, yeah. You know. Imagine coming back to your mates and being like, "Oh, boys, it fucking worked. <laughs> she's, she's coming over. She saw my dick and yeah. she just said, "I'm coming over." It was that easy. <laughs> it was that easy, man. And, th- and then, all, and then all the boys in the group chat are like, "Oh, fuck. Maybe all that's right. the secret." And now Maybe suddenly, I- all the boys in the chat send their dicks. <laughs> you're getting more dick, dick, dick pics from dick your pics. boys than. <laughs> Man, someone was like, hey, boys, like, about to fucking roll out this dick pic. Can you give us some advice? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro, like, the shadow looks so good. good like, do you reckon you could pump it up, like, a little bit? Maybe yeah. hold your balls lower? Yeah, or, or, is this the, do or, I want that much tip exposed? Oh, yeah, like, like, do you want urethra in it? or <laughs> Do I maybe get rid of my foreskin before I take this dick yeah, pic? Yeah, should or? I get circumcised? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things yeah. you need to cover with your friends. I don't, I don't I've been know. At home, well, since I've been at home lately, like, when, my, when the videos export from iMovie, I um, I do a lot of like I go down like wormholes, like or wormholes where it's like you you kind of like, I don't know. You just look at random YouTube shit. And I went down like an old cartoon phase because I've been like doing this thing in the mornings because obviously I'm still on holidays. I I like replicate cheese TV, but then I went real deep the other day and I was like, fuck, remember that show with the sharks? Check it. I got down, I got down this, I got down this rabbit hole and I got to this. So there was this show back in the day, 1994, and it was called Street Sharks. Jesus Christ, that's loud. Hang on. Oh, I'll put it up. What? Street Sharks. Does, fuck, this show was sick. I used to love this show. Street Sharks. The, the story behind Street Sharks was that these fucking gangsters, these like bikies, got like injected with this serum that made them sharks. But they're not in water. They're like half shark, half human. Street Sharks. And they fight like other fucked up weird creatures. Like there's giant bugs. Yeah, so it got me thinking. Like, I used to watch Street Sharks all the time. There's like episode collections too, like over there. Oh my God, I'm turning into a shark. But the more, the deeper you go into it, the more you think, fuck, this is a ripoff of Ninja Turtles. <laughs> like, the dude who made Ninja Turtles is probably kicking himself. He's like, why the fuck did I choose Turtles? I don't wonder which one came first. I don't know. 
I don't really care. But yeah, Street Sharks. You're like, <laughs> it's pretty much Ninja Turtles. Like, I don't understand why Ninja Turtles got so big and Street Sharks didn't. Sharks are so much cooler. Funny story about Street Sharks. Uh, when I was younger, my, my mum came home from the markets one day and she, she knew I loved Street Sharks. I used to love the great white shark dude. And uh, she bought me socks. She bought me these street sh- sh- like Street Sharks socks. That's a tongue twister. And I remember, the, I remember the socks. I used to fucking never take them off. Like I never take them off. And one day, I think I was like, fuck, I was like five or four or five. And I had these socks on. And I got fully naked to get into the shower. And I fuck, I, I've been wearing these socks for so long that they became like one with me. So I got in the shower and I fucking forgot I had my socks on. My street shark socks. Literally... And my four-year-old, I still, it, it's so vivid in my brain. My, my street shark, shark socks was still on and I was standing in the shower and my mum was like, oh, you still have your socks on. And then I just started fucking bawling my eyes out because I thought my socks were ruined because I weren't in water with them. And my mum had to explain to me that when I wash them, they go in water and that made me feel even worse. I was like, well, the socks are fucked now because when you wash them, you got to put them in the water. God, I was an idiot. We were at... um. I don't think I, I don't think I was even there, but I just just heard about it so many times. But um, we were at um, fuck, what was like, oh, oh hello, yeah, we're at oh hello. Um, anyway, and he, we were all fucked up, but he um, he went into the bathroom and apparently he like sat down and take a shit <laughs> and was <laughs> was no like he's in <laughs> on the toilet, not just like it's on the floor. You know, yeah. So you can't do that here. He was doing everything right. He was doing everything right. He sat down, take a shit in the cubicle on, on the toilet, and then obviously you know it's like his pants around his, his ankles. Yeah. And then like apparently he, he passed out, <laughs> and then and then and then woke up and vomited all in his pants. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yeah. The undies just caught. Yeah, had undies. <laughs> Yeah, imagine me. Imagine if he didn't realise that he pulled his pants up. <laughs> he pulled his pants up real quick and just <laughs> a bit of it like popped up onto his stomach and like chest. Like, oh, what was that? But yeah, apparently he just ran out. He pulled him up and just and just and just sprinted out. Uh. <laughs> oh shit. Because there's, there's no coming back from oh, that. Oh, no, you're fucked there's up. Nothing that, you do, yeah, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. No, I was about to say, have oh, you ever, um, you know how sometimes when you sit down like really quick and you're like, oh shit. And, um, <laughs> what is this going Sometimes like, you know, when you, when you poo, like you got to pee as well. Every time. And then dude, <laughs> like you're, you're so concentrating on the poo part when you pee, <laughs> the pee goes up underneath the seat. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me. That's happened to me. It just- goes underneath the seat and between the seat and the bowl. Yeah, <laughs> that's the fucking worst. And you don't realize for so long because it's like dribbling down. But why are my feet wet? <laughs> that's the worst. Oh, man. So I walk in the door. The door, I, I clearly, it's a 50 50 fucking chance. You know, if I can guarantee you, I'm the only guy that has a 90% chance of fucking up a 50-50% chance, if that makes any sense. Like for me to get the, there's a 90% chance that I'm going to choose the 50 that is wrong. That's literally my life. If I do black and reds at the casino, it's, I go black, oh, it's red. If I go red, it's black. If I go black and red, it's going to be fucking green, zero. So, and that's happened before, trust me. And anyway, so I, I walk in and of course, first thing I do is I, I pull the push door. Yep, pull the fucking push door. And this isn't just any door. This door has a bell on it. And when you pull the door, the whole fucking window rattles. So of course, there's five people in the, in the store. I pull the door open and the whole bloody shop just shakes. And of course, all the eyes go to me and that's the first time I go, ah, fuck. Good, excellent, cool. So I fuck up once. So I was like, okay, damn, my bad. So I go, okay, when you leave, remember, if you pushed it on the way in, it's a pull on the way out. I'll get back to that because, oh, it's not finished there. Then I get there and I'm looking at the salads and I'm just too far away from the counter that I can't, 
I can't read what's in the salad. So I'm like trying to sort of get close, but there's a girl in front of me and I don't really want to get too close because it's creepy if you get too close, especially if you're sweaty. And so I'm trying to like read and I end up like, like as I'm reading, I turn and my fucking phone falls out of my pocket and all my cards go everywhere because they're in the back. They're in the back of my phone. So my phone fucks up and so I got cards. So I'm on the ground looking like a house elf, like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, trying to fucking pack my cards up. So I'm sweating even more now. And then in inside my head. So when I'm like leading up, it's like anyone would think I'm going on stage to perform in front of like 10,000 people. Like I could probably do that easier. I could easily go up on stage, talk in front of a thousand different faces who I don't know, but God forbid I have to talk one-on-one, which is ironic because this is literally what I do as a podcaster, and try and order a salad. Um, so I get up there and the first thing I say, I have no idea what I'm going to order here. First thing I say is, I would like a small. Could I please have a small box? She goes, yep, no worries. Um, what would you like in it? And I said, uh, I just need the, the three or four vegan salads. Is that is that cool? She goes, uh, yep, that's fine. And I said, D- stupid. Like I should have, any normal human being would have just gone, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. There you go. Can I have those two salads? E- excellent. I'm going to shut the fuck up now. Nah, not me. Not me, no. I said, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, Kia likes those ones. This girl does not know who Kia is. Why on earth would I tell her what my girlfriend, who she's never met, likes to eat? Why would I say that? And then I get the awkward, oh, really, from her. And I've worked in a food shop before, and I know that tone. I know what she has said. That's the, I don't give a fuck, shut up. Like I, it was, I don't even know why I said it. I put literally her in an awkward situation because she thought I was like, just what is this dude? And um, so that happened, right? And then, of course, then there's a, a bunch of people come in. And um, so I'm already like, oh, why did I say that? Like, oh, fucking hell. Oh, well, okay. It's all good. She's wrapping up. She's, she's put the salad in the box. I'm good. I'm out. I'm clean. All sweet. No, 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 no. No, as if. Did not realize that I had a couple direct debits come out, right? A couple direct debits come out of my account. Excellent. Awesome. Didn't realize because I had my ComBank uh, notifications turned off. So I went to pay. And she was, it was only one girl working and fire out. She was working hard hours. Like she was just like churning out customers. Like, oh, she was a beast. But of course, uh, she clicks on the machine and leaves to go help someone else out and my card declines so I have to sit there awkwardly and she looks at me like dude you can go you've paid and I'm like oh uh it declined my bad I just need to transfer money so now she has to leave what she's doing unglove the dude's looking at me like you're an idiot and I'm like I do I fucking know sorry and so she takes her gloves off and she chucks them away and has to redo the thing I'm like I'm sorry This time I insert my card. You know what's dumb about that? I know the chip doesn't work. I panicked so hard that I inserted the card and of course it went card unable to be read to which she had just gone and put more gloves on to then take these gloves on and put me through for a third time. And I apologize, I said, sorry, sorry, did the same like when you hit the tennis ball over the net and it hits the net and goes over and you win the point and sorry. And then she goes, oh, uh, is it all good this time? And I said, yes, I promise it'll be all good this time. I tap it. We're all good. I'm away. Excellent. Remember the door? Do you remember the door? I fucking didn't. It was the one thing I said when I came in. I said, I pushed it to open it. It's a pool door to close. Mm-mm-mm. All this fucking shit that went down with my card and me being awkward, forgot that. And I wanted to leave as quickly as possible because I was so embarrassed for being a piece of shit. I walked as quickly as I could and... Oh, my God. It <laughs> Walked as quickly as I could, went to push the door as quickly as I could. Mm, door doesn't work because it's a fucking pool door. I've literally launched myself at the door, smashed my face into the door... Remember the window, because when you hit the door, the window shutters. 
that happens. Remember the phone where my bloody cards fall out. Had my phone in my hand, the salad in one. I lucky enough kept the salad. Once again, my phone drops and all my cards go everywhere. And I'm trying to pick up my cards whilst I just literally interrupted this whole store. There was, There is now 10 people in this world who know what I look like, probably see me on a daily basis around Newstead, and I'll be known as the dude who was a complete kook at Botanica. Welcome to my life. That's it's my amazing life. amazing how you can start something like that. And but even it like... Just, it gets adopted. Into Jay that. was talking to me about it when we first started because we, like, at first we were taking the piss with the comments like, hey, Josh, thanks for sending this one through. Yeah, it was really like, very, uh, like uh, replying to your boss. Yeah, yeah. Like, but we found that, like, from doing that, other people are now doing that. If yeah. that makes sense, like, it's, random yeah. people it's doing it. It's the psychology of, like, the comment culture. Yeah. Because oh. we talked about it early, was you can engineer yeah. this culture where... Because people want to feel included and... And, 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 that's and people, 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 yeah. people don't want to be scared to upload yeah. a video to 3,000 people. Personally, one of my things is what I said to the boys as well. Um, I'm a part of another beer page, won't name them, um, but it's a pretty toxic culture. Uh, oh, and well, so... That's, the bi- that's been the biggest thing. And that's the biggest said, thing. Right? So I, I joined that other page for work purposes uh, just because of beers got to sort of know the different crafties going around all that sort of shit um, and the comments that people say to each other about their beer taste I remember some guy put up a post about um, he had a, a five dollar pint of furphy at his local RSL which was on the beach awesome setting awesome picture he's like might not be a crafty or like the most crafty of craft beers but like this is awesome put it up and the bloke got absolutely torn to shreds about enjoying a furphy. And I was like, if you're going to get torn to shreds over your drink choice, like that's fucked. And yeah. like, that's something that we don't want in the group is that, you know, you can drink whatever you want, can be whatever you want, but don't yeah. feel as though, cause, and I was like, I talked to another chick. I, I work at Miss K's and, um, one nice of the plug. chicks, yeah, another plug. <laughs> my, my mate also works at uh, in this case. Shout out Curtis Burchard, keep flipping Patty's baby. Oh, Curtis in the city. I love that dude, man. Hey, Curtis B. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was talking to this chick in the city, Rachel, and oh. she was like, oh, I hate recommending beers to people because I've got such a different palate. And I was like, you know what? I've never actually thought of that before, that we all have such different drinking palates. So, like, I don't know, like, I don't enjoy stouts myself, mm. but I'm not going to knock someone for enjoying a dark beer. Like it's, yeah. it's just enjoy what you enjoy. Like and I think you just the thing about that that's cool too is, yes, it works in beers, but like that's something if if you can adopt that sort of culture with just. Uh, you know a fucking a fuck around group with beers mm. hopefully that might ooze into just general life like exactly. the thing I find really interesting is that and you know we're just talking about it like the guy Sebastian who like recommended this beer which is fantastic like he even said like I'm not really one to post on social media mm. there's been but there's been tons of those like dude we've got like yeah. Ma- shout out Mike I can't think of his last name the guy from New Zealand Oh, oh, Mike Strang. Yeah, yeah, Mike yeah. Strang. Oh, he's, he's posted yeah. too. Like, if, if, you right, if you search, he, he's yeah. the yeah. Kiwi fella, and he always goes, Cheers, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, What's his name? Mike, Mike Strang. Strang. S T R A N G. I don't even know how this man found the group. A N G. But dude, he posts so much. But yeah. if the if he was worried about being ripped to shreds, like, there's no way he'd post. Like, that's it's, our boy. And he does food pairings, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, like, that is unbelievable. And the, that's Shout the, out I, to the fireys too. That's unbelievable. Yeah, oh. exactly right. His first post was him drinking homebrew? his first ever homebrew. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I don't know where this man is. Like, I remember commenting, being like, I'm going to get a plane ticket over with the boys. And he's <laughs> like, oh, come do it, man. Wellington. I'm pretty sure it's Wellington. Sorry if you're not. <laughs> Real man. But like, yeah, it's just... It's good. It's good. That's that's what beers. Sh- that's that's what beers should be, man. Yeah. Like that's because oh. I look at you know I look at the way my old man drinks beers. Like his beers. Like when he has beers on a Friday at the pub, that's his like therapy time, man. Yeah. That's mm. his time where he's like, you know, work's done. I'm here with my mates, and that's it. Yep. Yeah. Body, right? Man, I uh, fuck. I got my uh, knee tattooed on fucking Tuesday, which is like three days ago. Oh shit, man. Tattoos, like, because I, you know, you probably can't see it, but, like, I, my, I got a, like, a bit of a leg sleeve going on. Like, you can't really, I got my arms and stuff, obviously, done, too. But, like, the the legs the main, my main sort of priority at the moment. And uh, it's filling up, so it's, it's kind of completely full all the way up to my knee. But I've had my knee, the stencil done on my knee for about three years now. And then, obviously, I was in my last year of uni when I got that done, so money was pretty scarce, and I kind of had to put my priorities into it, so I was pretty smart like that. So 
after three years, I final, finally scheduled in with um, with my mate James Tilly. He's I've been getting tattooed by him since he was an apprentice, and he's a fucking phenomenal artist. Like literally, if you if you want to follow, especially anime, my like leg sleeve is predominantly an anime sleeve, and if you want anime tattoos, this James is a fucking freak. So you can find his Instagram and stuff like that. It's JCT and uh, JCT underscore tattoo. So um, I might link it below because he is he is an animal. He's so good and he's the nicest bloke you'll ever meet, which is kind of ironic considering he literally just fucks you up with pain so but um you know so i booked in i got my knee done and fuck man like i'm gonna say this right now because there are some of those douchebag dudes that you know they ask like that you ask them like oh do your tattoos hurt and they go nah it's easy fuck you you are a dirty filthy liar if anyone asks me do tattoos hurt i say fuck yes they hurt so much like like terribly and they're like for five hours you got to sit there and just grind away it's like it's like someone stabbing you by going hey bro like i'm just gonna let this last out like five hours and there's like a complex to it too because you finish and you've like i've sweated i've dehydrated i feel like shit i've had ibuprofen i'm I'm dosed up on bloody painkillers and then you know what do you do hey mate can i book in uh can i book in another one in like a week because because you want more it's addictive it's fucked how addictive it is it makes no sense like if you said to me hey mate um i'm gonna fucking hurt you for five hours yeah and then after that five hours you're gonna ask me to hurt you again for another five hours in like four days time i'd be like you're an idiot why would I want that? That sounds Dude, terrible. I can't wait. You guys can fucking have the footage, go to town, yeah, cut it yeah, up, whatever the, fuck, yeah, whatever the just, fuck you want, man. I'm just going to have cut yeah. certain words so that you are saying, like... Yeah, like, cut me up so I say, like, really terrible things. Yeah, like, yeah. I, that whole like what Asian they did to segment. Isaac Hayes on South Park, where they took the chef and they just made him say heinous things. <laughs> We're going to do that to you. Big Shirley Life is the be- best <laughs> the, the, podcast. The best, the best, the best, the best. <laughs> Mine sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say the word sucks. Now we just put S-U-C-K yeah, yeah, yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's going to be another day of editing. Did you get the, um, obviously like the big shitty life came from the song? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. fucking, like when I saw it, I, I'm glad because I immediately got that. I immediately started singing it in my head and I was like, oh, Matter sick. Fix. Like, yeah. do people like not know? Like they're just like, oh, oh just living in those honestly, city suck like, balls. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the vibe. This is- Oh man, that's unreal. See, even that shit, man, I can't do that. I can't do that. Like, but the blown out bass is like king of memes, right? Yeah, yeah. I accidentally did that. I didn't even know that. This is the funny thing. Like, Kirby is, I would say, the king of memes. Like, he knows his meme shit. Like, his meme culture, he gets it. He's a meme scholar. I'm kind of. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm like a millennial trapped. No, sorry, I'm a boomer trapped in a millennial body. Yeah, yeah. And so we, I'm just like fucking around on my phone. This mini. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mini. this mimi. And then I'm like, oh fuck, the bass is blown out. And Kirby's yeah, like, nah, dude. Again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking boomer. It's meant yeah. to be like that. Oh, yeah, the rain's been hectic. The rain has been absolutely hectic. Uh, it's been pissing down with rain since about Tuesday. And you know what that means. What does that mean? Oh, that means. Every motherfucker in the world forgets how to drive. Yes, everybody forgets how to drive. Nobody knows how to drive when it rains. It fucking sucks. It actually kills my brain cells that the fact that, like, I've said it so many times on this podcast and I apologize if you're someone who's been listening for, like, a long time and you're like, oh, fuck, Matson's talking about traffic and, and bloody the rain and shit again. Yes, I am. I am talking about the rain and shit again because it just seems that people just cannot fucking deal with it. They just can't handle the fact that when it rains, uh, you just need to drive normally. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like the last few drives to work, um, lucky I'm a I'm a defensive driver. I have been uh, to a couple courses, and the fact that I failed my license test three times uh, means that I had to practice a lot of. Uh, Fucking defensive driving, because apparently I'm a shit driver. Well, that's a damn lie. Just takes takes a while to get perfection, I reckon. Um, 
But yeah, driving to work, man, I don't know. I'm lucky I got a dash cam now. Dash cam is the best. I reckon I could make a full compilation for dash cam owners of Australia just with me driving to and from work in the rain. It's like, it's fucked. Like, it's to the point where you can even see the shit happening. Like, you can see it happening before it actually happens. Like, you know, it just something simple as if like, you know how you get, you're in the middle lane, right? So you're in the middle lane and you see someone merging and the other person merging and you know damn well they both have their indicators on, but you, you know they're not looking at each other. Like, you know, and they come in and one swerves away and then one swerves away and then they swerve back in. And it's like, you know, when you, um, you run into someone, at the, like you're walking towards someone and and they step the same way as you and you do this, uh, 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 but except you're driving like two-ton death machines. So if you go the same way, you die. That's what it feels like. That's that's literally how it feels. And you just see it happening or like, you know, I'll, I'll see um, some guy not even looking where he's going, just decide to merge into my lane when I'm right next to it. And of course, I got to put the brakes on and you drive up and you do one of these ones. So like I'll be driving, you do one of these ones when you're driving you're looking and you drive up beside them and you're like you do this like you don't give the finger i don't giving the finger mean does nothing i reckon but you do these and you give them the what's the look called you give them the are you fucking right mate look like this one ready ready just watching i'm sorry if you're listening to the audio but i'm about to pull a really fucked up face you're driving along you're overtaking you can even mouth it like what the, what the fuck are you doing dude get it together Get your shit, get it in a bag, put the bag in the back seat and get your shit together. Because it's fucking annoying. I'm sick of it. Every time it rains. And it's always in the city. In the city is the worst for it. Riverside Expressway. Shout out to Brisbane's Riverside Expressway where everyone is fucking stupid. You know another thing I thought about as well. Mm. Girls, all right. Like... You know when you get things on like Snapchat or like any kind of porn thing, they're like, buy this picture for like four dollars. Oh, like premium of like Snapchat, premium, premium yeah. shit, and they're like, all right, look at my titties for like look five dollars. It is like a gallery of five photos. Yeah, men have ruined it for themselves. I think, know. Think about it, bro. We can't make we, money. We could we could have been there sending so, so many dicks. And <laughs> dick pics there are so here. many dick pics out there. That we is, just ruined a market. Yeah, bro. We it's like we send them so freely now. It's like printing too much money in the mint. Yeah, the, your dollar's <laughs> worthless. Our yeah, dick dollars dick, are worthless. Yeah. The dick coin is dead. But man, that coochie dollar is so high because chicks it's have done it. Premium. Dude, girls have done it so well. You know why? Because girls aren't animals. <laughs> they're not sending it girls, to their friends, dude. They're um, not sending their tit shots to their no. friends and being like, "What do you reckon?" Should yeah, I, oh, I reckon. But I Maybe think I like. I mean, this is coming from a male who's kind of fucking stupid. But I reckon girls are so much more comfortable sending those sort of pictures to each other. Like if a girl sent like another girl, like, hey, I'm wearing this dress. Like, I know. Maybe because like, they're not doing it so regularly and aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> dick pics are just aggressive, man. They are. Like, they're so aggressive. I feel like if I was to get into a fight, right? And some guy was like, here, check this. Show me his dick. I'd be like, man, this motherfucker is going <laughs> to kill me. It's like those videos you see the, like those stupid YouTubers and they're like, pretend G up someone on the street. Let's go. And then the other person. And then they dack themselves. Yeah, and they just dack themselves. Yeah. Said, Let's do it. Bro, you know. If I saw that, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. I'm not touching dicks. I'm going to start. Uh, I'm starting to get back into the interviews. Uh, like I said, last podcast, I sort of gave a bit of time off that. I didn't want to organize anything because school uh, was obviously pretty. My, my number one. In, um, number. I'm stumbling over my words. Um, was my number one priority. Um, now that's sort of I've got my I've got a good grip on that, so I don't need to worry about it too much anymore. I've got it all planned out, so I can actually focus more on getting guests. So if you know anybody that you think needs a platform to do whatever, it could be anyone. It could be anyone. Maybe someone's an up and coming rapper. Wait, there's there's a lot of those. Maybe someone's an up and coming artist, and you're like, hey, dude, I know this guy. He's a bit of a peanut, but he runs a podcast. Why don't you jump? Jump on and talk to him. And I'll be like, yeah, sick. Jump on my podcast, man. But yeah, I am going to be looking for guests. I've talk, spoken to a couple people. I want to keep it local. I really do want to keep it local. I feel like there's a lot of shit going on in Brisbane that needs to have sort of a voice. And if I can be that voice for Brisbane, I would be a... Oh, I'd love it because I love this place. There's so much cool shit here.